Hello and welcome to a Fanime Podcast. I'm Evan. And I'm Evan. So it's been a long time since there's been one of these. Um, Actually, the, the last the last one was the, the second introduction podcast for all the uh, the prospective hosts. Anyway, I just figured I would make kind of like an update thing to explain what's going on, where we're at now, and what I'm going to be doing with this in the future, because uh, it's been kind of up in the air a bit, and, well, like I said, there hasn't been a video posted in... Over a month now, I think. Maybe like two months, actually. It's been a while. I'll have to look that up and find out. But anyway, basically what's going on right now is, for lack of a better word, it's kind of like a hiatus. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It is a hiatus. It's not anything that I announced. It's something I probably should have announced, but it wasn't something that I expected to happen. It's just kind of one week I was like, eh, you know? I don't really feel like it this week, and so we didn't. I actually, um, we did record the next video to post, and I just never ended up releasing it because I just, I don't know, I sat down to edit it and just was not there. And then I never did, and then a few weeks passed, and then a few months, and now here we are. So it's not really something that I planned specifically. It's definitely something I've been thinking about, though. Um, I've already talked about this a lot with the hosts in the pre-podcast group, that's what it's called, but basically what it comes down to is I'm just not really feeling the whole podcast thing anymore, it's not quite the same as it used to be, and it's just not as enjoyable as it used to be, I was kind of hoping that by bringing in new people that would help to liven things up and then just make it fresh and new again and make it more fun to produce and more fun to listen to, but it didn't really do what I had hoped it would. And for me especially, it's just kind of like losing appeal. Whereas before, it helped a lot that all the hosts on the podcast were people that I just talked to on a regular basis anyway. Even when we weren't recording something, we would have a lot of calls and just you know generally chat and hang out all the time because we were we got along. We were good friends. All of us even, you know, went to OhioCon together except for Kiara, who speak in Germany could not attend, but nonetheless, I mean, we were all very close friends, but I don't feel like we're not friends now, but those same people, we're all just kind of doing different things now, everyone's a lot more busy than they were before, just, I don't know, life kind of moved forward a bit, and just in different directions that we didn't necessarily plan for, so we're at a point now where I don't really talk to any of the original podcast hosts on a regular basis except for Kisaka and even she now is going to be a lot more busy with things and we just don't see each other as much and so not having that not having that same group of people where it's like we're all very close friends and we talk on a regular basis and do the podcast together it's it's very different and you know those people are still there Jay, Arenia, Kiara, Shayna, and Kisa, they're all still there, they're still active, but they don't have as much time, and so we can try and record every two weeks, but I don't know how many people are going to be there for it, as was the problem before, where some weeks it would only be three people in the recording, and that's just not really what I would like the production to be. And so, yeah, as you probably know, the whole goal with bringing in additional people was to remedy that problem so that way if a lot of people weren't available for it out of the original group I would have some people I could call in to act as backups and keep the whole thing working but despite all of that it just didn't really click the way that I thought it would the way that I had hoped it would and like I said I've talked about this with all of them before it's not anything to do with any specific people it just doesn't have the same feeling anymore and just isn't as fun as it used to be and that's something that I was especially reminded of almost two months ago when um, I started really working on an animation more so than I had in a long time. I just got really absorbed back into it and I realized how much I actually cared about animating and how much fun it actually still was for me because there was a long period throughout last year and the beginning of this year where I just didn't really animate much and I didn't enjoy it that much and it just kind of was a very elongated slump I guess you could say. But yeah, midsummer this year, I um, I got back into it. I realized that 
I remembered what it was about animation that I like and and how great it is to just sit down and work on something and make something and get it done. And I was so caught up in that that I didn't want to take the few hours that it would have taken to edit and post the podcast. Like I just could not bring myself to do it. Because at that point, more so than ever before, it just felt like a huge chore. Like It felt like something that I really didn't want to do. Whereas, yeah, editing is normally a pain. It's not the most enjoyable thing, but it's never something that I just did not want to do. I always kind of dread the final processes of making videos, editing and just cutting things and cleaning things up. It's not the most fun. But at the same time, I still kind of looked forward to editing podcasts in the past because... I don't know, there was something, it was just, it was more enjoyable, but yeah, I've reached a point now where it's just something that I absolutely, definitely do not want to do. And the way I see it, I I know that a lot of people do enjoy the podcast, I enjoy the concept of it, and I used to enjoy it myself, and it makes me really sad to have to say this, but being unable to enjoy it right now, I don't think it's worth me putting so much effort and stress into it, because... Quite frankly, I have a lot of other things that I could do with that time. And I also hate to say that because it sounds kind of selfish. Because it is kind of selfish. Because the podcast as a whole was a production that was always created for the viewers. Because like I said, with the group of people in the podcast, I talk to them on a regular basis anyway. So we could have conversations like that any day of the week. That was a regular occurrence. It was just making the podcast was a process of taking that conversation and presenting it to people. It was just kind of a look into our opinions on things and the things we talked about. I'll be at a little bit more focus than our usual calls. That's what it was. And all of this was done solely so that people might watch and enjoy it. And I'm really glad that people did. I'm really glad that people did watch and enjoy it. And I hope that they still will be able to sometime in the future. But right now, with it being the way it is and me feeling the way I do, I don't think I can bring myself to keep producing it at the moment. It just isn't worth it for me specifically. And I hate to be the one, the one person kind of bringing the whole production down, but but that's just kind of the way it is because as with most of my productions, it relies heavily on me being there. I think that a podcast could run without me and I'm sure that someone else could edit it and just post it. I'm no problem, but I don't think I would feel comfortable with that because I'm very strange about things like that. Any production I'm involved in, I'm just, I have to be in control of it. And it's just not the same having someone else make it. It's its weird. I can't explain it. It's kind of stupid, kind of egotistical, narcissistic, whatever you want to call it. It's just one of those things about me, I suppose. I just would feel weird having anything on my channel that wasn't specifically made by me. Any production that I was not closely involved with. Because then it kind of feels like it's not my production, in which case, why is it on my channel? Which I understand is kind of a silly way to think about it when things like that. But, as I've said, that's just the way I am. <laughs> I'll acknowledge that it doesn't necessarily make the most sense, but there's not really anything I can do about it. I just would not feel comfortable with that. But anyway, I do still very much like the idea of having a podcast-type production where it's just kind of a conversation... We talk about things, you know, I like that. I like that a lot, and I liked what the podcast was. I just don't know if it can be that right now. And if I can bring that back in the future, if the same feeling comes back, maybe even a similar group, if not the same group, if possible, then I would absolutely bring that back. It's just a matter of finding that, I guess, magic again. It has to be, it's a balance between a lot of circumstances. A lot of things have to really line up for it to work as well as it did before, and potentially even better. So yeah, it's not it's not something that I'm throwing out completely. I don't want the production to just go away, but I don't think I want to actually do it until it's something that I really feel like doing again. Now, as for all the people that were chosen as prospective hosts for the podcast, they will still be considered for the podcast in the future. As of now, the way I'm looking at it now is... I plan to keep everyone on as a backup host in case there ever are open slots in the recording where main hosts weren't able to make it. I plan to just keep everyone that um, was accepted into this so-called stage two. Basically, everyone that has been introduced 
in the previous two podcasts, is going to be staying as a potential backup host for just every now and then situations when they may be needed. Asterisk everyone except for two people who were removed for personal reasons. And there were also three other people that did not get publicly introduced. Two of those people I don't know if I will be keeping, or rather, I don't necessarily want to not keep them. I just have not been able to get into the same room with them and you know record their introductions, and so I feel like they may be too busy. And the third person I did actually record an introduction for, but it wasn't until after the other two introduction podcasts, so it never aired. And I think that person may also be very busy. So there are three people that the three people that weren't publicly introduced may not be. I don't know. It just depends on what their schedules are. But I think all three of those people I would like to have as a special feature at some point, again, if possible, because scheduling was definitely an issue with the recording process for the preliminary podcasts. See, actually... I had planned to do a lot more recordings than we released. Like I said, I already recorded one of them. It was going to be all the introductions. And in the ideal way, the ideal way of it all going down would have been a specific theme every week, or maybe two weeks, depending on how things went. But week one was going to be introductions, and then there were going to be three weeks after that that each had different themes where I would have the hosts do different things and just present them with different situations kind of as a way to like t- test their personalities and opinions and such things, but also just because I think it would be fun to watch. So like one week I was going to have everyone review a different fanime that I would give to them. Another week I would make them watch just really awful troll shows that have very low entertainment value. And I believe the third theme was just going to be kind of like a free conversation, essentially a week where there are no updates, but you still have to talk about something relevant but very last minute, so people don't necessarily have time to prepare topics. Just kind of, like, get on the mic and see if we can produce a relevant show without any updates, episodes, or anything to go off of. Just kind of off the top of our heads, how relevant can we be? Can we make a podcast that's actually about fanime and not just kind of random spaghetti sauce kind of stuff? And yeah, like I said, we recorded one I did with a group of five people, which was the second prompt that I talked about, which is basically I forced everyone to watch some of the worst troll slash parody shows that I am aware of and could find, and that's what we would talk about for the hour podcast, and those would be the main the main subjects. But yeah, I don't know if that video is ever going to get released. Maybe I'll save it as a backup in case I ever do start releasing regular podcasts again, because it wasn't a bad recording or anything. I just couldn't bring myself to finalize it. Anyway, now that I've rambled on about that particular subject for so long, I think I've gotten the message across. Basically, in summary, I suppose, to repeat myself like a fifth time, not really feeling the podcast right now, and for that reason, it's going to continue to not be a thing for a while. I don't know how long it's going to not be a thing. I don't know when it's coming back. It just, it might come back when I want it to in the future. So, very nondescript. I don't know if slash when the podcast will return. I'd like to think that sometime next year, maybe, I'll bring it back. It's all a matter of a lot of random circumstances lining up, like I said. Anyway, there are a few other things I feel like I can talk about here. I'll try and get this video to a decent length. I'm not going to ramble on too much, but over the summer, there have been a lot of things going on in the community that never got covered in a podcast because, well... The Fanime Update podcast was busy doing the preliminary thing, even though we only released two videos. And so, yeah, just a lot of things that never got talked about. So I'm going to kind of look at a timeline for things going on and just talk about things that I remember from the summer, I suppose. Anyway, I do have a list of episodes. I'm not going to go too deeply into the two 12- and 48-hour challenges because those were all discussed on the introduction podcast, but maybe I'll mention those a little bit Well, while I'm thinking about it. Anyway, so yeah, two-hour challenge was the one that started it all off. It actually happened during a live stream that I was hosting, I believe. It was just one of those streams where we were watching random fanimes, and Frosted Eclair said to me, Frosted Eclair, also known as Anime Angel JJ, she was in the chat as well as a few other people. It was a good amount of people, maybe like 12 overall, viewing the stream at the time. And Frosted had the idea to try and make a fanime within two hours, which I guess was inspired by just watching everything in the stream. And 
so a bunch of people in the chat did it. Most of them actually, yeah, did participate in it right in that same night, and we all just, and that's what it became. The stream just ended up being us all trying to do the two-hour challenge, and then a lot of people did it in the following week or so. And then once again, um, Anime Angel JJ, or Frosted Declare, whichever you know or by, decided to follow that up with a 12-hour challenge, so that way people would have time to make something a little bit more concise, because two hours was definitely a fun challenge, but it didn't really give people enough time to make polished videos. And so the 12-hour challenge was kind of along the same lines, just more time, thus better videos. And I think a lot more people ended up doing the 12-hour challenge than the two-hour challenge, <laughs> oddly enough, because the two hours is really easy. It's only two hours, you know, you can find that time anywhere. But a lot more people did the 12-hour challenge, I suppose, just because having that extra time, there's actually more plausibility of actually finishing the video. And it was pretty interesting to see what people could come up with in that time. But more interesting, I think, was seeing some of the ideas that people had that they weren't necessarily working on. Because everyone has a series that they want to make, or a series that they're working on now. But most of these people will only see one series from them at a time, because they're so busy working on that one idea that they can't really focus on other side projects or just random ideas that they may have. And so it's always really cool to see what other things people come up with. Some of them were actually really creative, and a lot of them were made up specifically for the challenge, just kind of on the fly, but I think a lot of them are actually really good ideas, and that was another cool part about it, like what can people create on a moment's notice, and there were some very creative things, and I really liked a lot of them. And so both of those inspired me to finally start the 48-hour challenge, which is an idea that we had actually had in Fanime Rehab Skype group for a long time. It was something that we had kind of bounced back and forth. I think originally it was like started as 24-hour challenge, but then someone else proposed the 48-hour challenge, which was based off of something I believe called like Jam Cave. It's a thing where a group of animators get together and they all work on a video and they finish that video within 48 hours and they kind of like rotate in shifts like one person will sleep at a time and the other people are all working. That's a little bit different from what we did because obviously those people are all in the same physical area together. They're not doing it over the internet. They all have similar equipment and they're all very experienced animators and this is something they've done multiple times before so they know it a little bit better. So my version was kind of similar to that. The The main focus of it was to try and encourage people to work in a team. And I don't really think that played out the way that I wanted it to. Because um, what I was kind of hoping for was that people would work in more studio-like teams, I suppose you could say. Wherein each person would have specific roles in the project. But what it really ended up coming down to was, in most cases, a lot of people treated it more like an MAP, I felt. Where different people would animate different parts of it and they would do all parts of the process by themselves, and then maybe, like, one person would edit it afterwards instead of, like, a studio scenario where one person writes the script, one person does the storyboards, another person does the rough animations, and then someone else cleans it up, and then you have the in-betweeners and just all those different things. It didn't really end up being like that, which I can kind of understand because 48 hours might not necessarily be enough time to just have something like that play out, and that also requires a lot of like, preparation and such things, and some people didn't find their team members until the very last minute. I didn't even end up finishing my um, entry into the 48-hour challenge because my partner kind of kind of fell through. It was not necessarily it's not necessarily a situation where someone is to blame. It's just a lot of unfortunate circumstances lined up on that specific weekend. That meant my uh, partner wasn't going to be able to finish their half of the work, and therefore. We weren't going to be able to complete the whole episode, so we ended up just dropping out a little more than halfway through. And in fact, not very many entries were finished for the 48-hour challenge, because it was just, I feel like, compared to the other two challenges, it was just too much time. It was too daunting, because people didn't want to sit down and spend 48 hours working on one thing. That's not very easy to do. So it wasn't as easy as, say, oh, 12 hours, that's no problem, that's essentially a full day of just straight up animation but it's just one day whereas 48 hours is two solid days and it's very stressful it's very fast paced and just daunting like I said that's a lot of work that's a long time to sit down and do one thing that's hard for anyone to do and I think only like four or five maybe six videos came out of that and they were also good 
kind of in the same way that the other two were. Granted, with a lot more visual polish, there was a lot more actual animation, and the videos tended to be a bit longer, and they told more concise stories. So in that aspect, it was successful. Not very many people did participate, but I'm still glad that I did the whole thing, and I'm still glad that people did, and I like the ones, the things that came out of it, even though it didn't play out quite the way I'd hoped it would. Anyway, other things that happened in the summer, um, just going to kind of glance over the list of episodes that were released and talk about the ones that really stand in my memory. Our Life in the Sphinx episode 3 finally released, finishing that series, which started at the very beginning of this year, about halfway through the year. <laughs> Fitting. It's kind of funny, actually, how that one worked, because, well, like I was just talking about, it's one of those things that was just made up on the fly, because Our Life in the Sphinx, as I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before on the podcast, was something that came out of a New Year's New Year's Eve, sorry, Skype call, which was in the main Fanime Skype group, wherein I was just going to host a call for 24 hours. That way, it would include New Year's for everyone around the world, basically. And we would all just hang out and talk. Because, you know, big Skype calls are fun. And we, I got the idea through the chat, partway through the call, to try and make an episode before the end of the year and at the beginning at the beginning of the year, essentially what happened was we were talking about something or other and the thought struck me, well, what's going to be the last episode posted this year and what's going to be the first episode posted of next year? And then it kind of became a challenge to make either one of those. And then there was the joke about the Chinese Sphinx, which was something that just kind of came up in conversation. I'd mentioned how China had made an imitation Sphinx that Egypt eventually like forced them to tear down or something. Because it was just something I'd heard about before, but I looked up pictures of it, and just, it looked hilarious. It looks great. You should look it up. You've probably seen it, <laughs> if you've seen Our Life in the Sphinx, or any of the related shows that came out that same day. But, yeah, so, as a part of the challenge, it became kind of a joke that you should include the Chinese Sphinx in there somewhere. And so Corey ended up creating Our Life in the Sphinx as a result of that, and... And yeah, it ended up going on to become a three-episode series, but it's one of those things where it just kind of comes out of nowhere, but ends up being great. Obviously, that one's kind of silly. It's not very serious. It doesn't take itself very seriously, but it's still great just to see what people can make up on a moment's notice, just off the top of their heads. Candy High, episode one, part one, was also released this summer. And that's something that myself, as well as a lot of people, have been looking forward to for a very long time. It's the first episode part release by Shishi Beru, who's a very talented artist. And I actually have two pictures that she drew for me, blown up onto posters and hung on my wall. Although, grant, granted, I have quite a few posters. I've got like 20 posters on my wall of just random assorted kawaii schoolgirl fan art that I really liked and wanted to immortalize. But that's way off topic. Anyway, Candy High, Episode 1, Part 1, was finally, rele finally released at the beginning of the summer. And it was fittingly great. It was about as amazing, if not more amazing, than expected. The only downside is that there is not more. <laughs> like It's one of those things where it makes you really want to see the next part. Even though not a lot necessarily happened in the episode. Mainly, it just kind of introduced what I assume are all the main characters. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. But it really kind of piques the curiosity and makes you wonder what's going to happen next and how these characters are all going to tie together and just you kind of want to get to know them more and all of that. It's a very interesting start. I like it. Super Awesome Drihar crossover released two more episodes this summer. I still have to kind of catch up on that show. I'm a few episodes behind at this point. But I found out recently that it's only going to be a total of six episodes, so... It's on episode 6 now, like, the next episode to release is going to be the last one. I think that's really cool because it hasn't quite been a year yet, I don't think, since they started releasing episodes. Like, for the amount of effort and animation and things that actually go into those episodes, they've come out really quickly. And that's pretty great to see because it, you don't see it quite that often these days. Although it really does have me wondering, after episode 6, what the creators are going to do because I know that Drihar is kind of their main thing. The Super Awesome Drihar crossover is based off of Drihar, which is a manga that they've produced. I believe it has two volumes, which you can actually buy. 
order physical copies of them, and I think a few of them might be in a library somewhere in England. But as far as I know, it's the creator's main story, possibly their only story that they've really released anything for, so I wonder if they're going to do anything next. It would be really great to see them keep going with animation as a medium because they're very good at it. And it seems like, and I feel like they've improved between the first and the fifth episode of Crossover. So it would be great to see where they go from there. But as of now, I really don't know. I'll have to talk to them about it, maybe. Another thing came out that I feel like I should mention. It's not something I'm personally a fan of, but Yaoi the Fanime started releasing this summer. I think it has four episodes now. And... It's not normally something I would have a lot to say about. I only feel like mentioning it because mentioning it because it's blown up to be so big. Like it's not super like groundbreakingly popular, but it the first episode has more than thirteen thousand views last time I checked, and it's only been two months, and it's gotten to be quite popular in the last few months, which, in all honesty, is something that I don't completely understand. <laughs> I did actually go through and watch all the episodes recently. I wasn't originally planning to because it just didn't seem like something I would particularly be interested in. It just, I heard so much about it and I kept seeing people talking about it, just how popular it was and all that. And so I figured, eh, well, if it's as good as these people say it is, I may as well check it out, you know, give it a chance, see what it is, see if I might enjoy it, if it's funny or whatever. And it's one of those things where it's meant to be a comedy. It doesn't really take itself seriously. It's not necessarily a troll, but it's kind of a parody. And I, after watching all four episodes, honestly, I still don't get it. I just don't understand it. I mean, the show itself is very straightforward. There's not much to not understand. But I don't understand all the hype behind it necessarily, because I guess it's just not my sense of humor. I didn't really find it to be funny. It is interesting, though, to see it blow up so quickly but a little disheartening at the same time because I, I feel like I say things like this a lot, but every time something like that, which doesn't have a lot of effort into it, isn't really the greatest looking, it's not supposed to be, but it gets to be a big deal, I get a little bit disappointed because on the other hand, we have shows with genuine effort that are wholeheartedly serious and tell great stories and just they get neglected so much it's something i really don't understand these days is how neglected animations are on youtube pretty much kind of generalizing a bit because i don't see all animations so i don't know what all specifically is popular but pretty much for animation to be popular on youtube these days and just the internet in general a it has to be funny it has to be funny there really aren't popular animated web series that are serious or at least not very many of them so usually comedy is a major element in anything that is popular and as well as that usually animations on the internet are based off of something else usually it's like a parody of you know a video game or an anime or a tv show it's a parody of something it's not just original characters doing original things it's usually just some kind of like animated music video or silly dance or or let's play just things like that it's it's very rarely something original and that's really disheartening to see because there are so many people that have so many stories that they want to tell and just a lot of people trying to make great original content and it just gets no attention like people just don't watch it and i don't really understand why that is not completely anyway i can kind of understand it in some ways and by kind of I mean almost completely because it, it's one of those things where it's now I feel stupid because I'm just going to contradict a lot of things I said but yeah no I kind of get it I kind of get it because with a parody or you know comedy animation you don't really have to be that invested if it's a video short video maybe three minutes one off joke or a series of jokes that's all there is you've seen it and you're done it's funny and you share it but with a full-on series, you have to really get invested in it. You can't just watch three minutes of it and enjoy it as much as if you would watch the whole series. The problem being that most web, independent web animations don't go beyond a few episodes or they take a very long time to produce. So there isn't really any like large amount of content that a person can just binge watch. They watch a few episodes and then they've got to wait a few months for the next episode to come out. And I feel like that is what kills it the most. 
to bring up a somewhat relevant example, there is Ruby, R-W-B-Y, produced by Rooster Teeth. It is, it's, they call it an anime, it's really not an anime, but it's a, it's an animated series, and it does have a lot of just little jokes and things in it, but for the most part, it's not a comedy series. And it's become wildly popular all over the place, and especially in Japan, from what I understand. And they're selling DVDs of it, and they're getting millions of views on it. And it has all this following, and huge fan base, and people cosplay to conventions, and it's just everywhere, and it's big. But the reason for that isn't necessarily... Because when I first saw it, I looked at it very critically. I was like, well, this isn't that great. Why is it, <laughs> Why is it such a big deal? Because I was just kind of like, eh... I I mean, it's okay, but I kind of get it, you know, because there really isn't anything else like that, because it is essentially what I wish more fanimes were like. It's a serious story that is original and has content, basically. Now, it's hard to really compare that to something produced by one person, because it has a full team behind it, an actual budget, and people getting paid for it. So, it's not an amateur production, it's a professional production, it's very indie but it is professional. Nonetheless, though, it does have all the makings of a successful series, which, for the most part, is continuity. The biggest trouble with animated series on the internet is just keeping up with it, especially when it's one person working by themselves. You can't really release enough episodes to satisfy an audience, or at least not quickly enough, because if people see two episodes of a great anime... Are they going to be fans of that? You're not going to build a fan base on that, you know? And there are exceptions to that rule. I mean, there are some things that go in, like, what, OVA format, where it'll only be, like, an episode or maybe, like, a short movie or something like that. And those things do have followings, but they also have budgets, they have advertisement and things like that. In order to really build an audience with independent web animation, especially produced by one person with no budget, the most important thing you can do, I think, is keep going... Keep releasing content and release content quickly, especially if what you're making is heavily based on story. You need to get that story told because no one is going to be invested in a story, fully invested, I mean, to the point where they would consider themselves like a huge fan or something like that in one or two episodes. If your episodes are only five, ten minutes long, that's just it's just not enough content. That is ultimately the biggest problem for web animated series is just content. We just need more content. And I feel like it kind of goes back to that whole debate about um, quality versus quantity, I guess you could say, which is another thing that I feel like I talk about a lot. But it is very important because no matter how great you can make something, if you can't make it consistently, if you can't keep releasing it quickly, it's just not really going to go anywhere. And I hate to say that, I don't want to sound like I'm discouraging anyone, but it is worth really thinking about. It's important to know what your motive is behind making an animation, I suppose. Which is, again, something I talk about a lot. But it really doesn't hold any less true. It's important to know the reason that you're making an animation. What is the goal behind your series? Because if you come out with a story to tell, and that's the most important aspect of it, is the story that you're telling, it might be worth looking into lowering the visual aspect, having less animations, maybe no animations. You don't necessarily need animations. I know it doesn't qualify as an animated series if you don't animate it at all, but you look at something like Project Unknown, which is the example that always comes up because it's really the most relevant example in this case. But it's a great series, and it sets out to tell a story, and it does that. And it's kind of like it's kind of like an audio show. Most of Most of the appeal comes from the audio, and then the pictures are just kind of like accompanying it. And that's fine, because it's it's telling the story that it sets out to tell. Whereas on the other hand, you could look at a show that has maybe one episode, maybe it doesn't even have an episode yet, and it takes a year, or you know, maybe several years in some cases, to release a single episode, and that's it. What happens next? Do you spend the next year or three making another episode? Like, where do you go from there? Unsure, something that has that much time behind it is generally going to look good. I assume anyone taking that much time is spending it making their show look great. And in many cases they do, but it just depends on what the objective is. I know in the case of Terra Luchis, that's going to take a very long time to make. The original first episode, or at least the current, or not the original, like 
the last rendition of the first episode had taken about three years to date and it was not finished. I think at this point it's reached a time where it's only going to take one year, maybe a little more than one year. But it's just it's a crazy amount of effort going into it and it's very well produced. There's so much animation and just I think it's running at 24 frames per second now. It was running at 30 before, which is just a little bit ridiculous, but nonetheless, it looks great. It has full shading and lighting effects and all of these things and just, like, really nice backgrounds. And it's going to take a long time to make, but it has a goal behind it. Since, obviously, it's not practical for one person to produce a whole series that way, that is not the plan. I know that Arena doesn't plan on <laughs> releasing the whole series one episode at a time made by her exclusively. She's planning to release episode one, then use that as a foundation to build off of to get attention for a Kickstarter to hopefully fund making the rest of the series. But that might not be the case for everyone, and I know some people are just making their shows just to make them, and they think that, oh, well, I'll make the whole thing by myself. And that's great. I, Like I said, I, I hate to sound like I'm discouraging anyone, but sometimes that's not practical. If you look at a series, a good length for a series, oftentimes... It's like 20 episodes, maybe 26, anywhere between between 10 and 26. That's pretty average for most ideas that people come up with. Usually people that plan on having ongoing shows aim for around that length. But then you kind of have to do a little bit of math, you know. How long is it taking you to make episode 1 and multiply by that by 20? And how long is it going to take you to make the whole series? Because if it takes you a year to release one episode... Are you going to work on that show for 20 years? Like, is it ever going to get finished? Is it realistically going to get finished? And I feel like it's imp that's something really important to consider. Now, some people, some people can make it work. Some people can still have a fully animated series and release on a regular basis, or at least somewhat regular basis. It has been done before, and it does continue to happen, but it's very uncommon. And basically what I'm trying to say is that that's not for everyone. Not everyone can do that. Some people don't have as much time. They have other things going on in their lives. Or maybe they just don't have the motivation for it, plain and simply. And all of those things are fine. But when you're thinking about your series, it's important to be very realistic about it, I feel. It's important to look beyond the idealistic image that you get. Because I've, I've done that before. I completely understand what it's like to look at something and say, oh, well... I can do this, and I can do that, and that, and then I'll be done in three years. Because I did that last year. Last year was like that for me. I said, oh, well, I'll release an episode a month of uh, Kawaii Schoolgirl, and then I'll get seasons one and two finished up, and then start working on my next series, and then resume Kawaii Schoolgirl at some point after that, and just keep going over there. No, I was going to do an episode a month of Kawaii Schoolgirl, and one, like, short video a week, which is easy to say in planning. It's easy to say that ahead of time when you're looking through those idealistic glasses, but then you come to realize later on that, oh, well, maybe I don't feel like doing it this week, and then it doesn't happen. And then the whole schedule, which is built upon that, falls apart. If one brick, you know, falls out of that idealistic plan, the whole thing kind of tumbles down. So it's really important when you're thinking about these things and planning out your series and your work schedule and such things to be as realistic as possible. Don't assume that every scenario is going to be the best case scenario because oftentimes it's not going to be. In fact, it's usually not going to be. In some ways, it may be better to plan for the worst case scenario, you know? Well, maybe I'll only be able to get an hour of animation done a day. How long is it going to take? And then you can only be above expectations when you do more than that. But I guess the moral of all this roundabout conversation with myself, I, I tend to get very circular and just, I don't know, clusters. I, I talk in clusters. I branch off a lot and get distracted from what my original point was. I was talking about episodes. I think, <laughs> what was I, I was talking about Yaoi the Fanime. That was the last thing I mentioned before I got caught into this tangent upon tangents. Tangent of tangents, I meant to say. But the moral of all this last, like, ten minutes of me rambling about quality and things is kind of like where I started. The starting point is also the ending point. It's very important to consider the most realistic outcome, and I think that it's definitely worth all the time thinking about how you can make this easier and more practical for yourself to create, in which case it goes, once again, in a circle back to the point I said before, where you have to know what the objective of your show is. Do you really just want to wow people with visuals? Then maybe you need to ramp down the story so it doesn't seem like it's unfinished. 
do you really just want to tell a story? Then maybe you should ramp down the visuals so that you can get it finished. What is it that you want to accomplish with your series? What are you setting out to do? And some people are just doing this for fun. It's just a hobby. And so they'll do whatever. And maybe it won't ever get finished and it's not a big deal. And that's fine too. Whatever you want to do is fine. But it's very important to consider what will work best for what you're trying to do. What are you trying to accomplish? Always keep that in mind. Anyway, now that that all is out of the way, how about we look at a few more episodes from the summer? Shrug. Um, Roxy finally released... I say finally, not really finally. Roxy released Liar's Truth Episode 1, or Lie 1 as it's called, which is great. I have not watched the full episode, and now that I'm looking at it, I'm really not sure why I haven't. Like, I, I thought I did, but I don't feel like I have. Or maybe I did and I just don't remember it well. But nonetheless, um... I, d I definitely looked at the video because some of my friends told me it was very good, and I take their word for it. I looked at it, and it did look very good. A point that one of my friends made was that it's cool the way that there's so much animation. The characters gesture a lot, and they don't just sit perfectly still while they're talking, and I did notice some of that when I skimmed through it a bit. I say this all the time, but it's always great to have someone come back that hasn't been here for a long time, especially someone that was well-known before and continue doing things, and just pick right back up and say, hey, here's an episode. And I don't know when Roxy plans on making episode two, but I shall look forward to it. And I need to go watch that. I'll have to watch that after I stop this recording. Oh, yeah, another thing I should mention, even though I honestly have not watched it at all, is um, Q, the series, the spin-off series, I believe it's kind of a spin-off prequel of Into the Stars. All um, six or seven? It didn't have a full, like, ten episode. Let me see. I think it was like six or seven, something like that. All the episodes of it were released during the summertime, and it tells the story of what I believe is like one of the antagonists in Into the Stars. I haven't finished Into the Stars either, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's kind of a backstory for one of the characters. And the entire thing is already done, and now Emily Loves Cookies is working on Into the Stars Season 2. And that, to me, is fantastic. It's very rare that someone produces quite that much content but it kind of goes hand in hand with what I talked about before, wherein Into the Stars, Q, all of those shows, they aren't the most animated. They aren't really that animated at all, but they tell a story. They tell a whole story, and it gets finished. The story gets finished, so that's important. And there is, there is animation in there. There's not very much, but there is animation. And I think it's great that they're just able to continue and that Emily <laughs> is able to keep releasing episodes week after week. I'm pretty sure she releases an episode every week, and that's pretty impressive, no matter what. Sugoi Quest for Kokoro Episode 4 released sometime last month. Well, by the time this releases, it'll be like two months ago, but yeah. Sugoi Quest for Kokoro Episode 4 released. That's another one of those things where I'm not like too crazy about it, but I feel like I should mention it just because of the sheer popularity of it. And... Uh... I feel like it's kind of starting to lose its appeal for me. The first two episodes were great. Episode three was so-so. Episode four for me was just like, eh, I didn't really laugh at all. Which is kind of disappointing for me because I laughed a lot for the first two. I found them very funny. But in episode four, I feel like the joke is kind of starting to wear thin. It's not really doing new things. <laughs> it's a lot of, like, the same old gags. And, well, there's not really much I can say about it. I mean, it's Sugoi Quest for Kokoro. You can't really change it, because what are you going to change it to? If you ch change anything about it, it's not going to be Sugoi Quest for Kokoro, but I just, I feel like it has limited potential. Like, that, those same set of jokes can only go so far, and it's really starting to feel like it's drying up for me. Now, that said, I know a lot of people did enjoy it and continue to enjoy it, and that is also fine. Personally, I don't know if that series is going to keep being entertaining for me. Let's see, two episodes of Magical Girl School released, episodes 9 and 10, both being the usual quality you can expect, which is to say very good. I believe 9, episode 9, is probably one of my favorite Fanime episodes of all time. And the main reason for that is because there's a scene in episode 9 where just... It's just kind of like a montage, like a training montage. The characters are, like, learning powers and just practicing and things and all that. Like, the scene on its own isn't, like, extraordinary, I wouldn't say. It is very good. 
but out of context, like it wouldn't have the same impact. It's just what it represents. It it was like one of the first times that I watched an episode of a fanime, and I really felt like something was happening. Like I really felt like things were moving forward, like a story was actually being told, and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> So it's always really good to see things like that. And I think that that did it really well. That was probably the best case of that that I've seen before. Episode 10 was a little bit more chill, not quite as much going on all at once. And it's... (laughs) The the climbing number just constantly reminds me that the show is only going to be 13 episodes. So I just keep wondering all the time, like, how is this going to get tied together in three more episodes, you know? But for the meantime, I shall keep waiting. And I suspect I will not wait long. Another major release um, this summer, Train Step In, Episode 1. Something that was very anticipated. Um, think about it, I guess. Well, I should probably talk about the episode itself beforehand. I thought the episode itself was really good. It had a very, very good sense of setting. Like, you could really feel where everything was. And the layouts of things really flowed together. It really felt like they were just in this place. I don't know. The The setting was conveyed very well. I like the way it was handled. I also feel like it was set up very well. Just the dialogue and the pacing and all those things worked just like they were supposed to. It does raise a lot of questions, which I feel like obviously is the point. It's kind of a mystery story. And it really makes you wonder what is going to happen. What happens next? Where does it go from there? Now, there is... A somewhat negative topic related to it that I wanted to talk about, which is it kind of released behind schedule. It was supposed to release at the beginning of summer, not necessarily in the middle. And I think it was going to have subsequent episodes every two weeks, and there hasn't been an episode since then. So that does have me a little bit worried about it. Since originally it was supposed to be a weekly release thing throughout the summer, then it got downgraded to two weeks, and... Now I don't know what's going on with it. I haven't heard any updates. You know, I haven't seen the creator around at all. I don't know what's going on. I know that Bonanza Studios is very busy. She does have a lot going on in her life. I think she works three jobs and I believe is still in school. So she's definitely got a list of valid excuses for not having released more content. But I'm just, I'm a little worried about it. And I'm hoping that it does keep going because it looks very promising, and I liked it a lot. Oh yeah, so uh, Nyan Neko Sugar Girls, episode 1.5. Once again, one of those things I probably wouldn't have much to say about, but, you know, big deal, Nyan Neko Sugar Girls. Uh, One of the most popular fanimes ever. It finally released, 1.5 being, I assume, the OVA that was promised. It took two, three, two or three years, yeah. About two and a half years, I think, for that to get released. And for it having taken so long, I'm pretty disappointed because it doesn't look like episode 10 did where there's actually like more animation and a little bit more uh, intensity to the visual style I mean it always looks like now Neka Sugar Girls but they definitely tried harder on episode 10 episode 1.5 really wasn't like that it was just kind of like what you would expect between episodes 1 and 2 but I don't understand why it took two and a half years to release because it just <laughs> It looks like something you could make in a day if you wanted to. Although I suppose it is good that the creator Soap Opera 46 is still out there and doing things. I wonder if they're going to do anything else now. Now that the OVA is finally done, Nyanaka Sugar Girls is pretty much concluded. I mean, it was before, but now that the OVA is out of the way, everything about the series is finished. Is there going to be another series eventually? Is there going to be something after Nyanako Sugar Girls? Will there be a sequel to it? Is anything else going to come from that? I know a lot of people would rather there not be, but I am very curious to find out. Although granted, 1.5 took two and a half years, it's probably safe to say that nothing is going to happen anytime soon. Majiki Akari Episode 1 was also released in the summer. That was very interesting. That was created by Kisaka, and that was... The first fanime I've seen that takes a full-on visual novel approach to storytelling. Whereas Penalty All About is described by Giselle as visual novel style, Majiki Akari goes the extra mile to where, to the point that it has, like, text across the bottom of the screen. Although, it didn't have a narrator like Giselle's shows usually do. So, it was kind of one of those things where, in some ways, it felt more 
like visual novel in some ways less I almost would want it to have it like I almost expected there to be a narrator anyway that was very interesting it was pretty long it was like 15 minutes long and I thought it worked really well for what it was trying to do which was tell a story and it did a good job of that despite being in visual novel style which is very like I don't want to sound rude by saying this you know I'm not trying to say this is like a bad thing but it's kind of like lackluster in the visual department not a lot is going on like there are character sprites that are set and there aren't very many of them and then there are a few backgrounds like the characters don't really move around a lot and the backgrounds don't change that often so there's not that much to look at but even despite that I feel like it worked really well and it still held the attention like it didn't ever feel like it was boring to watch because of the visuals so I definitely would like to see more things like that if it means more stories are getting told. I don't know if there's going to be another episode of Majiki Akari, but um, even though it's not really my style of show, I'm not crazy about the romance things and stuff, I do look forward to hopefully seeing another episode of it. Maho Senshi Episode 2 also released this summer, and it was pretty good. I found it to be quite enjoyable. Um, another one of those things where I'm not very animated, there were a lot of still shots. There were a few shots in particular in the middle of the episode that felt a little too stiff. Like, when the characters are standing in front of a crowd in the background, and nothing is moving but one character's mouth. I understand that no one wants to animate a crowd, and it's not worth it. It's honestly not worth it. But it felt a little bit too stiff. Nonetheless, it was a very good episode, and there was a pretty cool fight scene right at the end the pacing was a little bit weird but overall i liked it a lot and it was probably the the, one of the more exciting magical girl shows that i've seen even just based on this second episode not much really happened in the first episode because it was just kind of an introduction to the characters but i think episode two continued it really well and i can't wait to see where it goes from there and i know i just got done talking for (laughs) a super long time about how it doesn't necessarily matter how animated or not animated the visuals are if the goal is to tell a story. The only reason it felt weird in um, Maho Senshi is because some shots were animated, and the shots that were animated were animated really well, and then there were other shots where it was just like totally not moving at all, and so it felt a little bit jarring when it would transition between the two of those, but like I said, overall I thought it was very good. Let's see, the Sonder Goes to School slash Don't Take My Hat crossover finally happened, That was pretty interesting. You definitely have to have watched both shows to really get most of the jokes, but that was definitely something. (laughs) I I don't know how to describe it. It Very, very much like what you'd expect, I guess, from a crossover between those shows. Very wacky. Very, very wacky. Let's see. I released my own episode. I don't like to talk so much about my own content because... I don't know what I should or shouldn't say, like, what's biased, <laughs> but but Moe Microwave Episode 1 was released earlier in August. I guess I can talk a little bit about the develop, like, kind of the behind-the-scenes stuff, since I don't have a lot to say about my opinions on the episode itself. Now, I talked earlier about getting really back into animation, and that kind of, like, took away from me being wanting to do the podcast, and that helped me realize how much I didn't actually want to do it. And Moe Microwave is a thing that I started working on. I started the um the storyboards i believe june 30th or 27th 27th to 30th was when i started the storyboards and the episode was finished by august 10th so altogether the whole thing took me about a month and a half to finish which is completely unheard of for me because the episode itself was it was about 1350 frames i think which is almost as many frames as Kawaii Schoolgirl episode 11, which took me eight months to make. So basically, what took me eight months to do before only took me a month and a half. Now, in this case, I was super inspired to work on it the whole time, or at least most of the time. There were a lot of breaks, actually, in that month. I could have finished it a lot faster than I did, but there were a lot of days where I just would not work on it. I would just take a break and just play video games all day and do no work on the animation. In fact, probably, like probably more than a week of that month and a half period was just me not doing anything. But the whole thing was very inspiring to me because it was such a stupid idea. It wasn't like a serious project, obviously. It was just something silly and fun to make and it was very stylized in a way that's easy to animate. 
and I really enjoyed working on it. And it really was also inspiring to me because it kind of gave me the realization that, hey, I actually can make decent stuff in a short amount of time because a month and a half is it's a fair amount of time, but to make an episode in that amount of time is not something that I knew I could do before, not an episode of that caliber because I keep saying because so much, I don't know why, but Moe Microwave is at this point the best thing I have produced in terms of episodes. It's the best episode I've ever made and it only took me a month and a half as compared to episode 11 of KS, which took me eight months, and that was my previous best. So it's definitely got me thinking about what I could pursue next. Right now, what I'm working on is KS-12, and it's kind of strange, actually, because when I started working on KS episode 12, well, while I was working on Moe Microwave, I planned to make KS episode 12 after it, and I thought it would be the same. I thought it would feel the same way about making it. I would really enjoy it, and I would just speed right through it and get it done in a few weeks, because it's already halfway done, the episode. But when I started working on it, I didn't really feel that. I didn't really feel that at all, and I still don't, and that's why it's not done yet, because I just am not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. And it's kind of strange, since it's already an 11-episode series, and this is a continuation of it, I can set up things or I am setting up things that are a lot more intense than anything I could do with, you know, an episode one of something. So it's strange to me that I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would, since I've been waiting so long to make these things happen. And now that I finally am able to make them happen, I just don't want to. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm still working on that. Episode 12 is going to release sometime soon, I hope. It's technically taking longer. I think it has been longer than it took me to make episode 11 by now, but only because I did so many things in between. It's not like I've been working only on that this whole time, kind of like I had been with episode 11. That was really the only thing I did. I just didn't work on it enough. I barely worked at all for those eight months for episode 11. For 12, it's more like, yeah, I'm just not working at all on that. Well, I did, I did work on it. Like I said, it's halfway done, but I had another serious project in between there, and just a lot of other things going on. Anyway, I'm still going to finish that. I don't know when it's coming out, because I just don't enjoy it right now. And I'm hoping I'll be able to enjoy it soon, but right now I just don't. So I might end up pursuing another project in the meantime. I might look for something that I can enjoy as much as I enjoyed Moe Microwave, because I think that's what's going to make my best work. Obviously, if I keep forcing myself to work on episode 12, it will get done. But I'm not going to enjoy it. It's not going to be my best work. I don't feel that I need to rush into that. I'll just keep doing it little by little like I've been. And I'll get back to really obsessing over Kawhi School Girl when I can enjoy it again. Kind of like I did at the beginning of last year when I released all those episodes right in a row. That was great. I wish I could go back to that. I can't go back to that right now. I'm not in that mood. I'm in a mood for something that's not Kawhi School Girl. And I'm not sure what it is yet. But I'm going to find it, and I'm going to release something really cool, I hope. I don't think it's cool. I don't know if anyone else will. But that's a big thing for me, is like motivation, because I can't always be motivated to work on one project. I have a very erratic imagination. I'm constantly creating new ideas. I have more than 60 ideas for animated series, and I'm making more every single week. So it's really hard to focus on one for an especially long period of time. And I feel like that's kind of like what's starting to get me with Kawaii Schoolgirl. I've been working on it for more than, not no, about three years now, yeah, almost three years. And it's just really starting to wear down on me that I'm still chained to this project. Since there are so many other things that I could be doing and want to be doing and should be doing. So yeah, it's like I said, I'm not giving up on that. But I'm going to follow my motivation and see where that takes me. Anyway, back to episodes. D -d -d just a few more now. Moe Microwave was early August, so there are only a few shows left on the list, really. Actually, there are very few. Um, <laughs> one that was really strange. It's not something I would normally bring up. Satan's Bitch. Satan's Bitch, episode one. Perhaps the most offensive and explicit fan... <laughs> not offensive. Some parts of it are offensive, but it's not super offensive. Mainly, it's explicit. It is very explicit in a sexual way, like no anime before 
has been, except for maybe a uh, blood raining night. But the, I just I I don't really know what to say about it. I definitely want to say something about it. Is not what I expected it to be when I saw like the opening for it released uh, a few months ago. Nonetheless, I found it to be quite funny. <laughs> And I feel like if you're into that type of thing, mature humor, with very explicit content, you should probably check it out too. You might enjoy it. See, there are a few things that are very recent now to me. It's it's August 31st, the date of recording, so I think I'm going to post this next week, in the first week of September. But it's August 31st right now, so yeah. Um... Ape Kodomo Escape came out. Pretty Guardian Forgotten Soldiers, Episode 1 finally released. I have not had the chance to watch it yet, but I've been waiting for that one for a long time. It's the one that's based off Sailor Moon, but it looks very promising. I need to look into it. Senpai Club Episode 3 Part 1 was released this week. Now, I've always been very critical of Senpai Club, mainly because of its success. Senpai Club, I feel I hold to a higher standard than other fanime. Namely because the creators are making so much money off of it, and it's getting so much attention. And, yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely, I understand why people like it, and I see the appeal in it. But nonetheless, it is still just not for me. I just cannot enjoy it. I don't know. I just don't see it. It's not my type of show. Which is strange, because it seems like it would be my type of show. Or at least in some areas. There are some areas where it's like, yeah, that's... That's humor I can appreciate a lot, but other times it's just kind of like, eh, eh, eh. And episode three, um, I was kind of unimpressed with it. Visually, it's great. It's always been great in the visual department. The animation is fantastic, and I love the composition, and the way everything comes together is fantastic. The audio is generally good. I can't really judge the voice acting that much because I don't know Japanese. I don't know if, like... It just sounds like Japanese to me. I don't know what's considered good or bad acting in the Japanese language, to be honest, because they have a different way of uh, conveying emotions through speech. But anyway, um, visually, very impressive, as always. Always raising the bar a little bit. It's very 80s inspired. That's the whole point of that episode. But I didn't really find any other entertainment value in it, personally. It felt like there weren't very many jokes in it that weren't just kind of tired Basically, it's making fun of 80s anime, and it's kind of playing off of that aspect. It's like a parody anime. It's, it's funny, because animes do this, or at least they did this in the 80s. But that doesn't really strike me as that funny, because <laughs> we've seen this a lot. People parody anime all the time, and it's not really doing anything unique to itself. Like It's not parodying anything in a unique way. It just feels a little bit uninspired, and it kind of brings back that worry I had before where I said, I don't know how long a series can continue based off of one joke. And that was definitely something that came to mind while I was watching it. It felt like it's on episode three and we're already getting into filler. And I know it's an independent animated series. It probably doesn't have too much of an overarching story. So in a way, most of it's probably going to be filler. But I just, I don't know. I feel like it's very soon to be pulling out such an extreme case of filler. Like, it just... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it overall. I can definitely appreciate it for what it is, though. And I respect it a lot. I respect the show and the creators a lot. And what they're doing, as I've said time and time again, is very inspiring. Because they've taken this animation and they're really getting somewhere with it. I mean, they're selling merchandise, they're selling DVDs... They have a successful Patreon. They get tons of views. I respect them a lot. The show is not for me, sadly. Let's see. Squall of Magmel Episode 2 was released. Parts 1 and 2 were released separately, but they're both out now. I have not had the chance to watch those either, and I feel really bad about that. Like, this summer has been really bad for me. I just, I haven't watched a lot of things. There are so many things that I'm really far behind on. Like, Fanime as a whole, I need to do another live stream some point, at some point to, uh, just catch up on everything I've missed this year because there are so many things that I have not watched that I really need to watch. But Squall of Magmel, um, episode one was very interesting. It had a lot of mystery and wonder to it, and it was very fantastical, and it set up this interesting world. So I 
I would have more to say about it if I had seen episode two. I don't really know where it went from episode one, but I definitely intend to watch that very, very soon. And if there's a next time, I shall comment on it then. Anyway, that pretty much brings us to the end of summer. There are a lot of great shows that I did not mention, and just a lot of shows I just don't have time to talk about specifically, or things I just don't have quite as much to say about. But anyway, uh, Cotton Candy Episode 8 Part 1 came out, and that series is always good, and I highly recommend it. Do You Really Love Me Episodes 2 and 3 were released. I don't know if I've watched either one. I think I've watched Episode 2. Yeah, and it was really good, and that series is really good, and you should absolutely watch it. It's very well animated and all those things. Like, it it moves a lot. There are very few still shots in the show, and it's great. I like the sense of character and interaction and such things, and you should check it out. Akumu no Yume, episode one, was released. I want to say that was, like, anticipated for a while, but it really wasn't, because uh, the creator, Trevor, Monkey and Moose Inc., he hadn't really been in the community very long, and he went straight ahead and released that episode in no time, and that's great, and I can't wait to see episode two, which I believe is coming out soon. Also, it's an action fanime, and there are guns and demons and stuff, and you don't ever see that ever, so you should check that out. Uh, Welcome to the Panties Warfront, episode four. Again, very good, very suspenseful and tense and such things. Uh, Another show with guns. Don't really use any guns in episode four, I don't think. Maybe that's a spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. You should check that out. If you've been following the series, you've probably already checked it out, but if you haven't, watch the whole series. Jinko Chino Rumble, Episode 3, Five Nights at Freddy's references. Yay, no. Nonetheless, show is always great. You should check that out as well. Pretty much, the bottom line with fanime is you should check everything out. Check everything out. But yeah, Battle of Madness, Episode 1, Part 2 raised a lot of questions that I suspect will be answered later, and I cannot wait until they are. Penalty All About, Episode 4, have not watched it yet. I definitely intend to soon. I think also Episode 5 was released. Maybe? I could be wrong about that. I can't find it on the list. I, th- I feel like it was. Whatever. Penalty All About. It's great. Watch it. There's a narrator. My Demon Girlfriend, Episode 2. Hilarious. Random funny story related to that, actually. Uh, I'd, I don't remember if Corey actually told me what it was for, but one day she just kind of asked me, like, what's the heaviest metal song you know? And I just gave her a list of things. And then, yeah, it ended up being for My Demon Girlfriend, Episode 2, which you should check out. It's fantastic. Sweet Sangin. There's a funny story behind that. Sweet, Sweet Sangin, Episode 1 is something that Maxine made, creator of Tokyo Magic Star, Kwai Ouija, I should call her. Um, she made that, and it's about like making cookies or something, or cookie baking club, I think. The, the story behind that, actually, is one day we were in a call with some other people, and I don't know how we got on the subject, but basically the topic was cookie fanime, and we challenged each other to make cookie fanime, and whoever could make a cookie fanime first was the winner of the challenge, and there weren't really any prizes, but yeah. And so I started making one, and she started making one, and yeah, we were just going to compete to see who could finish the episode first, and I lost in the end because I got tired of mine and gave up on it, basically is what happened, and she actually went through with hers and finished it, and that's Sweet Sang in episode one, and maybe someday I'll finish mine because I have all the audio for it, I just need to finish like a few more frames, it's very like low quality since it was just supposed to be a quick thing, (laughs) but yeah, Sweet Sang in Cookie Fanime. Check it out. It's cookies. It's fanime. You'll love it. Game of Worlds Episode 1. I don't... I feel like I've watched it, but I don't remember what it's about. Check it out anyway. It's probably cool. I believe Forest Warriors had like three episode releases during the summer. That's... I, Mag- Magical Girl. I haven't watched all of them yet. You should check that out as well. Again, bottom line, check everything out. Magical Neoto chan Episode 6. That show is always... Strange. But if you're into that... You know watch it oh yeah another thing i feel like there's a lot to say about and it probably did not get very much attention space galactia monsu tech varka i sounds like russian but also not russian at all released by uh, bonnie n or uh brought vulture not really much dialogue at all in that it's like three four minutes i think but a lot of fantastic animation. It's very action-y. There's a lot of action. It doesn't really take time to explain things. It just kind of gives you something. It gives you something very flashy and awesome to look at. And I suggest doing just that. Look at it. Oh yeah, Game of Worlds actually had two episodes. I I need to rewatch those and figure out what it's about. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so behind on everything. It's horrible. I'm out of practice. 
I think that's just about everything that I could mention, though, so far. The things that really stood out to me specifically. Just because I didn't mention you doesn't mean you aren't also awesome. I probably just haven't watched your show (laughs) if I didn't mention it, because like I said, I'm really far behind. There are a lot of things this summer that I did not watch. There is one thing that I noticed a lot this summer, though. Troll fanimes. Troll slash parody, most of them are just troll, like they try to act like they're serious. Desu... Um, there have been a lot of those. I mean, there are always a lot of them, but in this case, there are a lot by a few people. There were some weeks where some people would release, like, five episodes of a troll fanime. Sometimes, like, six. There were just tons of them every single week. There was one week where I believe there were 14 episodes of troll fanime, and I just don't know what to do with it all. Like, where is this coming from? There was always a lot, but there was never this much. Like, jeez, people have really started to, like, pump that out, and I don't know how I feel about it. There was also, like, somewhat of a debate earlier in the month where, I don't know... Basically, the message that some people were sending was troll fanime is bad and the jokes aren't funny anymore and you shouldn't make it. And I kind of agree with a few of those points. Yeah, most of the jokes are not funny. Troll fanime as a whole is just, it's not funny. It never really was. It was like, it wasn't really funny, that funny to begin with. And it's only gotten less funny now. I can definitely appreciate genuine parody fanime, wherein it's like, it's just kind of like playing fun at something or just mocking something, but it's not like trying to trick you at all. But troll fanime, where they try to make you think that they're being serious with it, I would absolutely agree, not very funny. Not funny, a little bit tired, and extremely overdone. Now that said, um, I don't think it's fair to condemn anyone for doing something that they want to do, as long as it's not harmful. Which is kind of where the debate comes in, I guess, because is troll fanime harmful? Who are they making fun of, you know? Oftentimes, the people that make shows that troll fanimes try to emulate are very young people. They're not really experienced. And so you could argue that a troll fanime is making fun of those people who are just young and new to art, new to animation, and they don't have a lot of experience. And so their shows may have like a few technical issues. Now, I feel like at this point, troll fanime is so convoluted that it's oftentimes just making fun of itself because... People don't really make shows like that anymore. Even the young people in the community who make fanimes don't make fanimes like what troll fanimes are trying to be. I feel like troll fanimes are just based off of other troll fanimes at this point. But anyway, the point I was making was if people enjoy making those things, then by all means, they can keep making them. I just won't be watching them. And same goes for anyone who doesn't like them, you know? If people want to make those and they enjoy making those things, they can make them, but people just won't watch them and people don't watch them like those those shows have very few views most of the time i could link you to probably half a dozen of them that you've never heard of that have like 10 views on each episode because no one cares so if people enjoy doing that by all means let them and you just don't have to watch it i mean i don't have to watch it either i don't want to watch it i'm probably gonna watch it because i'm a stupid person so whenever i do another live stream like i said I definitely plan to. Maybe I'll do it this weekend, or like last weekend, depending on when this video comes out. Maybe I'll do it sometime. But yeah, to catch up on things, I'm probably going to watch a lot of troll fanimes that I don't want to watch because, well, for me, it's kind of like an obligation. I feel obligated to watch everything, even if I hate it. Anyway, this recording's running a bit long. The actual file length right now is almost an hour and 40 minutes, but I feel like after I cut out all the silences and awkward pauses... It's probably going to be more like an hour. But yeah. Oh yeah, there's there's one last thing I wanted to mention. One last thing. Gosh, I've been, you know, so much to say. Shut up. Long pause. Oh yeah, so... Anyway, one last thing I wanted to mention. Um, I kind of like the format of this type of thing. I've only I've done this once before. Where it's just me talking to myself, yelling into my microphone for basically an hour and just rambling on and on and on and, like, branching tangents off of tangents until I end up with some kind of twisted and disturbing tree of madness. But I kind of like that. I think that, as compared to a podcast right now, I do actually enjoy this format of video. And so I'm thinking that I might keep this going for the meantime. Essentially just me talking to myself. At least every now and then. 
And then, like I said, when I feel like bringing the podcast back, I will bring it back. I don't know when that's going to be. It's just a matter of when the idea seems fun to me, when people become readily available again, and just a lot of things like that. I do want to bring it back at some point. It's just a matter of me actually wanting to do it again. So yeah, um, let me know how much you like this video, and I may or may not continue doing these based on that, as well as however I feel about it. Personally, I'm enjoying this right now. I don't know how long I'll continue to enjoy it, but yeah, that said, thank you for watching, or listening, or whatever you do. Just thanks for clicking on the video, even if you closed it after like two minutes, even if you closed it after two seconds. You don't even know I'm thanking you, but I am, because you're great people, and keep being great people. I'll keep being a dumb people, and I'll see you next time. See, normally I could say goodbye, and then everyone would shout goodbye over each other would make a perfect ending, but I can't really do that by myself. Goodbye, Evan. Goodbye. Yeah, anyway, uh, see, see you next time or something. Bye.